This is the RV Game Changer. In this podcast, we will speak with manufacturing leaders, component suppliers, dealers, subsector innovators, influencers, and industry experts who all believe RVing is good for our environment. It's good for our economy. It's great for our family values and overall well being. With your help, we can improve the RV experience for everyone. Looking for a side hustle and extra income? With RV Wheelitor, it's easy. Help people buy and sell RVs on your time and start earning right away. Call me today, Daryl Jensen at 520-230-3123 and get started. RV Wheelitor, turn your passion into mailbox money today. Next gens and baby boomers, pay attention. Tony Provost is a licensed expert with incredible insight on how to best plan for your retirement. Many of us dream of having RV adventures later in life, but we waited a bit too long to plan for this dream. What if there was a way to accelerate our plans by using little known money management techniques which grow your savings and remove the often devastating downside of the market? This is where Tony Provost comes in. Tony has the knowledge and a lifetime of experience on how to use his unique no-risk strategies which removes all the guesswork and downside from what we get from traditional methods of investing. Reach out to Tony and find out what the richest people in the world are doing with their money. You can do it too. Today's episode of RV Game Changer is brought to you by RVing Today TV. If it has anything to do with RVing and camping, you can bet you'll see it on RVing Today TV. Celebrating its 14th year, RVing Today TV is the number one weekly RV and camping lifestyle show in the country. Available on major television stations and sports networks nationwide, as well as various streaming media platforms. Visit RVingToday.tv where you'll find the list of stations and networks carrying the show along with additional stories, news, and contests. Here on RV Game Changer, we like to cover all angles of the RV industry. Today, we will be speaking with a New England RV icon, Sherry Fuller. She is the co-owner operator of Fuller RV Rental and Sales. Her and her husband, Bobby, have been renting RVs since 1984. For those who can do the math, that's about 40 years of doing business renting RVs. We will find out more about their services, products, and how they have maintained their sustainability for over 40 years. But first, I'd like to ask you a big favor. If you find RV Game Changer interesting and helpful to your RV experience, please like and subscribe to RV Game Changer with Uncle Bernie on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and share this show with your friends on all social media platforms. I'd be forever grateful. Ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado, please allow me to welcome Sherry Fuller to RV Game Changer. Hey, Sherry, welcome to RV Game Changer. Thanks for being on the show. Thank you for having me. Oh, my pleasure. So, Sherry, you know, it's uh, been about 40 years ago, and how did you come up with the idea of renting RVs and other vehicles? Well, we actually had rented one ourselves, and when we came back, we rented it from a uh, gentleman that had started the rental business, bought a motorhome and started the rental business. And my husband had worked for him prior and approached him and said, let's work together again and build the rental fleet. Because back then it was rentals and sales. And so he said, sure. And we came on board and managed the rental business for six months and then just bought the name because it was basically brokerage. It was like the beginning of timeshare. So people okay. would buy units and put them in lease back. And then we'd rent them out. We'd clean them, maintain them, take care of all that end of it. And they'd make the mortgage payments with what they, with their percentage. So other people owned them, but you were kind of brokering the, uh, the, the lease part of it or the rental part of it. Exactly. We made sure. So basically we we're in charge of paying the sales tax for their unit um, making sure they had the right insurance on it and handling the bookings and the cleaning and the showing of the unit. All right. So you did all the heavy lifting. Someone else owned the RVs, but that's changed over the years, right? How's that changed? 
it has i mean the last one with that lasted for about 10 years and by 93 the last one was gone and we started building our fleet and so we pretty much since 2008 have maintained um 50 units 50 to 60 units on the rental fleet between trailers and motorhomes oh wow and i'm going to just uh, pop on to your website for a second here um but it looks like you know, you have some new and used products on there. You're, you're still offering to sell them, and you have them for rent, too. So those same products that you have for sale are, are for rent, correct? Exactly. That's how we do it. When we get them, they're for rent as well as for sale. So people can come in if they like it, they see it, they take it, they come back, and it's the right fit. We'll take a two-day portion of that rental and apply it to the purchase so now they know what they're buying and there's no surprises. So in less time that, you know, two day, two years down the road, they're going to, they don't want it anymore. They, they don't like it. They're going to hold on to it longer because they've already used it and they already know that's a unit that they want. So, so basically they can try it first, make sure it's the right fit. Oh, but I so got you. Yeah, people, yeah. But so many people buy them, they take them out one rental or, well, they take it out once or they have it for a year and they sit, they look at each other and say, you know, that probably wasn't the right one. So let's go, let's sell this and do something else. So right. by using it first, they get away from that. They actually hold on to it longer and enjoy it. Well, that actually makes a lot of sense. So, you know, everyone, you know, I'm an RV salesperson in my other yeah. life, right? So, um, yeah, a lot of people are very concerned about buying that first RV and making a big mistake that can be very costly. So by renting it and then maybe renting a couple of them until they find that right fit is probably a good good idea. Exactly. Yep. And that's what we do is even if they try three or four different ones, we'll take a two-day portion of each of those rentals and apply it to the one that they, they actually buy. That's Oh, that's fantastic. So you actually reimburse them for that rental amount. So that's fantastic. Exactly. Um, yeah, that's a good business policy. So uh, that makes a lot of sense. Now... You've been in Boylston. Has it been the whole time in Boylston? Yes. Yep. Yeah, we um, actually took over in 84. We moved it over in um, the fall of 85. So 1985 to now, we've been in Boylston on Route 140. All right. And I'm just, you know, wondering, you know, why not maybe a little bit more populated area? Are you getting enough traffic out there to maintain the business? Actually, as of probably the last couple of years, we've seen traffic will actually stop outside our garage. I sit upstairs on the second floor and I can look straight out onto 140. And between right. three and five, Monday through Friday, the traffic is stopped. So people oh have a chance goodness. to sit there and look. And also there's a, there's a very popular golf course across the street. They come down and they're looking at the fleet before they go left or right onto 140. Oh, that's fantastic. So that's like built-in advertising. And it seems like the population, like a lot of other, you know, uh, less urban towns uh, is growing. More suburban towns are filling up and the urban areas are, are kind of depopulating a little bit. So you're getting a lot more traffic, just like we are here in Nashua. Um, you know, there's a lot more traffic going northbound uh, out of the city during the afternoons than there has been in the past. So, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So, you know, I know... You're not a huge operation. How many employees do you have? Uh, my son and I, and we have a couple girls that, that help us clean. And, um, you know, one or two guys that come in and help on, on occasion when they're, uh, they have their time available um, to help with mechanical or, you know, just washing the outsides and stuff. But pretty much, it's my son and I and my husband, even though I retired him um, back in 22, he still comes in and, he does all the moving, the gas fueling, the um, getting the inspection stickers, all that, dropping off and picking up. He's in charge of all that. So even though he's retired, you got him on logistics, basically, right? He's still working. Yeah. <laughs> he, just, he, just says he doesn't get paid for it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that's even better for you, right? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Reduce your overhead. Uh, that's great. So what part of the business does your son operate? He, he handles the garage. 
So basically the cleaners, he does all the mechanical, he does all the prepping, um, anything that, you know, any ordering of parts and stuff, he's in that, he's in charge of everything downstairs. Making and sure all if, the systems are operating properly. Exactly. And if people come in and he, they see him first, they, he is a very good, he's a salesman as well as rentals, as well as he can do the show through basically everything I can do, everything I do, he does too. All right. So if you take a day off, the, the shop's covered. Yep. Now, That's are you seven days a, day a week out there? Seven days a week. Seven days a week. Wow. And, and you know, it's amazing. 40 years. That's a commitment to the to the uh, customer, you know, and I guess that's the way it goes. So what's the, your philosophy on that and and uh, how you treat your customers and why they keep coming back for more? The biggest thing is we do a complete orientation. Well, number one, when they come in, they're able to look at all 65 units that I've got with nobody hounding them. I have a brochure. It's about 15 pages. I give them that. Tell them where the units are numbered on the front and the back and on the door with ticket tapes. The number, the first number is the number of the unit that's in the brochure with the unit number. So now they have all the information before they walk in the door. They go in, the slides are open, they're clean. They can check them out, see what they like, but they can be there for four hours. Nobody bothers them unless they ask a question. And then when they come back, if they find something they like, they can ask me to give them a quote. It only takes five minutes. So it's the ease of choosing. Then also they come in the week before to do the orientation. And it can be anywhere from an hour. Some of them might take three hours. I try not okay. to. But I want to make sure they know everything. They get a right. three-page cheat sheet that's all highlighted for them. They go Checklist home. The following yeah. week they come in pick up the unit and there's no time wasted. So now they know everything already. They take off. But if they have a problem on that sheet that I gave them, they have three numbers. They have the local number, the 800 number, and my cell number so they can oh, wow. text me or FaceTime me if I can't figure out what they're asking. Well, isn't that amazing? Now that's customer service and that's a commitment because I, I'm sure people call at inopportune times, right? They're going to they're gonna be when they need it. It could be 10 o'clock at night and they find out their furnace didn't turn on and someone forgot to turn the propane on or something like that and you're walking them through it. And so that's tell me about some of the experiences that you've had as far as customer service related and how you responded. Well, I mean, I've had it. I've had people call me. They've got to the campground. It's 10 o'clock at night. Of course, it's pitch black. So, and it's their first time hooking up. And I have to actually, if they were a trailer, I have to actually walk them through disconnecting, first leveling, then disconnecting, then dropping the, the jacks, then hooking up. And I will walk them through every aspect of that to make sure that they're set up. And if not, it could be, like you said, two o'clock in the morning, the heat's not turning on. What did I do wrong? Or the refrigerator, I got two lights on top. What am I doing wrong? And I walk them through it. But it's it can be anything. There's no water. Did you hook the water hose up? Did you turn the water pump on if the water hose isn't hooked up? A lot of people, when they dry camp, they have to remember so much that they forget they're setting up. And why isn't the slide going out? I'm like, okay, did you set the emergency brake? Oh, yeah, that's right. Or yeah, a lot of them... Whatever. Exactly. But the thing is, a lot of them, you can't even have the engine on the older ones. So they'll call me, okay, I've got the engine on, I've got the emergency brake on and I'm plugged in, but it's not working. Okay. Shut the engine off. And then all well, of a sudden I can out. hear the yeah. slide working. I'm like, there you go. That's that one. You know, it's funny because each RV actually has its own personality, right? Each brand of RVs has different set of you know, ways of doing that, like especially when it comes to motorhomes and slide outs, you know, some of them you have to have the jacks down, some of them the engine should be running, the seat has to be forward, the emergency brakes, some of them if you have the keys in, it doesn't work, and so you're more reliant on battery, and, and like you say, it's, it's always a better idea to plug in and then make sure you have plenty of power uh, and, instead of just relying on the battery, especially if it's a cold night or whatever it may be. Um, 
But man, that's a that's a lot for you to remember, and it's a lot to be able to try to translate it to all these different customers that have different levels of experience, and most of them have very little. Correct? A lot of a lot of them are first timers. They've never done it before, and they want to try it. So I gotta I encourage them to not overthink anything. When you overthink it, that's when you get yourself in trouble. Right. You got to relax. Take a deep breath. You're almost better off opening a beer at that time. And then <laughs> wisdom just comes to you from the universe or the neighbor in the next campsite. <laughs> you know? Exactly. I just tell them common sense, leave the genius at home. You just need the common sense. <laughs> oh, exactly. No, that's, that's a great point. And, you know, RVing is a lot about common sense and uh, you know, it, sometimes you're right. People, you know, people I meet, sometimes people overthink it and it's like, Okay, go out and have a good time. Focus on that part of it. Focus on the camping, what you're going to do when you get there. And, uh, you know, and, and the things will happen uh, as they happen. Sometimes it'll be easy. Sometimes it'll be a little bit more challenging. But it's all a learning experience and, and part of your overall experience. You know, I'm sure people come back to you and said, oh, you know, this happened and that happened. And I was really confused. And then when I figured it out, all of a sudden, everything was easy. And uh, and they remember the accomplishment, not so much the challenge, right? Exactly. Exactly. And it's nice when they come back and they said they had a wonderful time. And when they do come back and they say that they had any problems, I just remind them, I say, how many times did I tell you during the show through to call me? Right. I didn't want to bother you. I said, how many times did I tell you? Call me if you have a problem. I know. It's, so it's it's basically, it's just a matter of them getting the comfort in calling me. and Just ask me. It's easy for me to answer the, the problem in five minutes than, than them to try to figure it out in two hours and lose that two hours of time. Right. No, you're absolutely correct. And, and I think, uh, you know, people are being trying to be polite. They must like you if they don't want to bother you <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> so i guess you must be doing something right for sure now what do you think has been one of the major reasons why people uh keep coming back and, and people um have sustained helped sustain your business for 40 years um the variety of what we have to offer we have just in the the class c's we have 30 different floor plans it takes people a couple hours to just breeze on through and see what we have to offer. But when you've got the the A's, a good selection, the I've got the B pluses, three different, completely different ones. I have the the C's, but I also have the travel trailers. We just picked up a fifth wheel that's going on the rental fleet. We've got oh, wow. a beautiful hurricane that's going on the rental fleet. Those are both 2019s because we buy them from private owners because they're getting out of it and they're new enough that I can put them in the rental fleet. They they're still in excellent shape. They've got low mileage or they were seasonal. So it's the perfect unit for us to put in the fleet. Even if we have to deliver it, set it up and then go back and pick it up. It's definitely worth having it on the fleet. So that helps us too. When people do ask us, do you buy used units? Well, you know, that brings up a good point too, because, you know, we've heard of other rental companies out there, and most of them only have Class C motorhomes, right? And they're really not offering it to everybody because not everyone can afford to rent a, a big motorhome uh, and or have the confidence of driving that. And they may have an SUV that they can tow one of these pieces over here. I'm just going to bring one up in a second if I can get this uh, thing to work here first. All right. And... I'm going to bring up something like this. So a camper like this particular one, yep. this Gulfstream Amerilite, sure. you know, you know, that can be towed by most uh, full size SUVs or even some mid size, like a forerunner or something like this probably only weighs about 3,200 pounds or something to that effect. And, uh, or, or even less. And that could be towed by some folks. Right. And uh, this would be a good starter camper for them. And then it also could be affordable if they decide to buy it. So, you know, you offer these types of services that are above and beyond what you get typically at other uh, rental agencies. So tell us how that diversification is giving you like a competitive edge. 
So you're right with those single axle trailers, your single axle trailers are great because they're six cylinder towables. So if you just have a six cylinder, you're that's great. It's perfect. It's under 4,000 pounds. We use the weight distribution hitch system. So therefore it actually is the perfect unit. And we've got seven, I believe of the, the single axle and about the same amount of the double axle. But that's what I mean is you don't have to have the big truck. You can have the small SUV, get in it, go camp like everybody else. As long as you've got all, you know, the, the um, towing um, hookup, the electric brake control, the seven round plug, as long as you've got everything on, then you're all set. We show you how to do the rest and you, you can still have a lot of fun. Well, that's fantastic. I, I like the fact that, you know, you have all of that in uh, brake controllers. You guys put in brake controllers as well. Unfortunately, we don't do any of the wiring. They have to have that done prior, but okay. we show them how to use, we rent them the weight distribution hitch system, which with a small SUV, sometimes that towing capacity is low. You use a weight distribution that gives you another thousand to 1500 pounds of towing capacity. So now they can take that unit that they like and okay. we show them how to do it. And it also, it makes it a better experience because when you use a drop hitch with no bars, that thing is wagging on the back. You use oh, yeah, yeah. distribution and you got stability and the people aren't freaking out going over 55 miles an hour. Right. Right. So it's not dancing in the wind. Every time a truck goes by, it's not, trying to pass the camp is not trying to pass <laughs> exactly and you're not jackknifing and doing damage to your suv and damage to the trailer right right not stressing out the frame of the of the car for sure um let's see now is there a specific time frames that you rent them out for or what are some of the parameters that you use to rent them out i mean People like to do the cross country trips. When they do the cross country trips, those can be anywhere from two weeks to four weeks. Okay. And that's no problem. We figure out the mileage. We figure out the, the time that they're going to be gone for the rental. And I mean, I've got it, people tell me where they want to go. We, we go on Google maps and figure out how many miles it's going to be round trip. And then we can put the price together. But I mean, I just had one that came back from Colorado and he did it in nine days. Oh my and God. 4,200 miles, 4,200 <laughs> miles. I know. That's, that's a, that's a road trip. And then some. It is, but he had three days out there. So it was great. And he was able to add a day. He only rented for eight, but he added a day on the end because he said, listen, I'm not going to be back there tomorrow. I said, no, <laughs> not a problem because I knew it was going to extend. So I made sure I didn't do a back-to-back -back rental and it's basically right now it's in the off season. Right. I got you. That, that makes a lot of sense that you know, your, your customers, right. And you start to read them and say, this, this person might add a couple of days. So we, we better make sure we have some flexibility here with that. Now, let me ask you a question. Now, do you have to qualify the renter and, and what do you do to do that? Because these are expensive rigs. Like you're talking about these class A motorhomes and stuff. They could be worth, you know, upwards of a hundred thousand dollars. And, uh, and you're putting that trust into someone else's hands. And how do you do that? Well, a lot of times if anybody's in, if anybody's questionable about it, we'll do a right. test drive. I've got it. I take them up on 290. We get off of one exit, take them through the back roads of Boylston, which we're a small town. So they got some nice small back roads in, in that 15 minute drive, I can tell if they're competent or not, if they're right. going to be comfortable. And also after that, they feel more comfortable. So they know they can handle it. And for the most part, the people that come in are capable of driving it. As I said, you tell them how to do it. You tell them they don't have to be there yesterday. Take your time enjoy yeah. it okay to be just, in the right lane <laughs> just stay in the right lane don't go in the left lane and enjoy it it's when you're overthinking and we tell them about the trailer trucks going by you and then sucking you into the draft and throwing you out and we tell them about about that feeling so that it doesn't scare them the first time out and getting into campgrounds like how am i going to park it so listen, you have a problem. You can have five people that are going to come over to you and say, Hey, do you need some help? I can help you. I can help you. 
So that's that's the nice thing about it. You get there and you're trying to do it. Campgrounds have even gone as far as if you need help parking, we can help you. So right. you're not there by yourself. You have a family, a campground family that is helping you on every aspect. So you're never by yourself and you make friends. So that's what What's oh, nice it, about it? A- absolutely. And that's part of the experience, right? Is the the feeling of community when you're RVing. You know, like when we were at Normandy Farms a couple of weeks ago, I just noticed that everybody you could make eye contact with and stock, strike up a conversation with them. There wasn't like what we typically get in our current set of neighborhoods and stuff like that. RVers are generally very nice and they want to help. And they want to, it's, they're just the, the first ones to pitch in when there's an, an issue. Um, and so that's a great part of it. But also what you're saying about getting out there and getting your hands behind the wheel and giving them the confidence, you might give them one or two or four or five little tips on how to drive such a big vehicle. And they become very confident with it once they understand how simple those rules of the road are for an RVer. Now, how exactly. about financially? Do you have to qualify them financially in any way? They're they they pay two weeks in advance, right? So they can use personal check, they can use Venmo, they can use um, credit card. So payment is be, way be payment is in the bank by the time they take the unit, and we have the security deposit, of course, and they know they're responsible. I mean, the deductibles are high. Because it's a motorhome, so it, they're responsible for the first twenty five hundred dollars worth of damage. So right. that means like not paying attention, going through trees, um, you know, going under low bridges. We remind them about that, and pulling in and out of their driveway if they've got cement walls, if they've got again trees, bushes, branches. You got to be careful of everything. So that's part of during the orientation, reminding them the height, the width, the length. Um, you're low to the ground, make sure your step comes in, um, you know, going through that three page orientation reminds them that <clears throat> they can't drive it where they drive that car. They need to think about the size and they need to think about the speed. You're not doing 75. Now you're doing 65. So right. allow extra time to get there. I tell everybody 50 miles an hour is your average speed. By the time you gas up, stop for lunch, get back on the road, just average 50. If you're going 800 miles, guess what? It's going to take you 16 hours. And that's what it comes down to. So allow that extra time and enjoy the scenery. And, exactly. And you're going to be fine. You are going to be white knuckled for about an hour. In an hour, you're going to be comfortable. The couple trucks have gone by you. You're comfortable in your lane. You're comfortable with your speed. So as soon as you get a knack on that, then you can enjoy it. Yeah, you know, people think that the learning curve is so long. It really isn't, it's folks, not. you know. And so, um, you know, I recommend if you're thinking about RVing and you're just worried about the little stuff, you need to go talk to Sherry because, first of all, she's going to calm you down a little bit and help you relax about the whole process and then break it down for you, you know, situation by situation so you're mentally prepared to go out there and camp sherry i can't thank you enough for joining me on rv game changer today it's been an absolute delight and uh, people really need to look you up so tell us on how to find your website uh, your location and your phone number okay so our website is fullerrv.com or we do have another one which is very our original domain name was USA Motorhome Rentals.com, which worked for all my international customers okay. and back in the day, and they still use it. So I have those two to, those two domain names will bring them to my site. But we are on Route 140 in Boylston, which is central Mass, Massachusetts. But easy thing is it's exit 26B off of I-290. Doesn't matter which direction you're coming from, same exit number, mile down, on the left, easy, open seven days a week. Monday through Friday is usually till five, Saturday and Sunday. 
is till five also. But I mean, with the time change, we usually go to four on weekends and five during the week. As it gets dark, it gets hard to see inside these things after dark. But oh, yeah. we have a lot of lights on inside them. And we give you flashlights, too, to keep. So, oh, that's so handy. If you come after dark. But we are open seven days a week. And it's 508-869-2905. Easy to get to us. Say that again week. real slowly, okay, Sherry? Okay, so phone number 508-869-2905. And you will always get somebody on the other end. I know, you always answer every time. Thank you so much again for being on RV Game Changer. People, if you're looking for a fantastic opportunity to start your RV experience, do it with Fuller RV in Boylston, Massachusetts. God bless and have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. RV dealers, are you losing deals because your customers are upside down in their trades? RV Realtor has the solution. They specialize in helping dealers like you close more deals by offering a way out for customers who owe too much on their current RV. RV Realtor will help turn those impossible trades into possibilities, giving your customers the chance to get into the new RV they really want. Don't let a trade-in hold you back. Partner with RV Realtor and watch your sales soar. Call RV Wheeler today and close more deals. And if you want to find the latest episode of RV Game Changer, make sure you go to rvtoday.tv where you find our latest episode along with a lot of great information, tips and tricks and videos of RVing Today TV. If you want to get a hold of me, go to RV Game Changer on YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn and Instagram. And make sure to subscribe. Have a wonderful week and God bless.